The Galaxy S21 design has been revealed in new renders along with the first live photo and I'll be sharing the details right after this. Today's video is sponsored by MoffDex Invisible Phone Stand. The MoffDex is an invisible phone stand compatible with any smartphone and incredibly versatile. Once attached to your phone, you can use it as a phone stand to hold it in the desired position hands-free. Whether it be work or play, the MoffDex allows portrait mode, which is great for meetings, web browsing and FaceTime. And we also have the landscape option for those wanting to watch media or game. With a secure magnetic locking mechanism, it can be used anywhere you like and it's going to stay in the desired position position you choose. It can even be used as a hand grip when you're out and about on the go. On top of it being an incredible phone stand, it also holds up to three cards with RFID blocking to make you feel safe and secure. With its simple adhesive installation, the MoffDex Invisible Stand is a great addition to any smartphone and best of all, they've given me a 15% off code. The discount code along with the purchase link are down in the description below, so go ahead and check it out today. So this week has been incredible for the Galaxy S21 leaks. We've got the design revealed for the S21 and the S21 Ultra. We've got the first photo leak, confirmation of battery capacity, more design and spec information, along with news that we could be seeing it earlier than normal. Before we get started though, please like the video if you're a fan of Samsung. Let me know in the comments what device you're watching this video on. So first of all, apologies for the lack of news on this channel. I've been away on vacation, so I haven't been able to do the daily videos, but I'm back now so we can continue with daily content. And the first story of the day is the battery capacity. We previously had the S21 Ultra revealed as a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And we've now got the Galaxy S21 appear in 3C certification. The certification confirms a Snapdragon 875 system on chip and a rated capacity of 3,800 80, meaning the S21 is likely to have a typical battery capacity of 4000 milliamp hours. For those patiently waiting for the S21, we also have news that production is likely to start a month earlier. A report from Sam Mobile stated that the Galaxy S21 is going to be launching in January 2021 instead of the usual February. This makes sense if Samsung have been adding more devices to their range, so they need to make sure there is a bit of a break between the product launches. They also suggest that the Galaxy S21 is going to launch alongside the Galaxy Buds 2, as we only saw minor improvements this year with the previous launch of the Buds Live. Next up, we've got the reveal of the Galaxy S21 and the S21 Ultra in new renders along with the first photo leak. If we start with the renders, we had Ice Universe provide us with his 2D renders and some information to go with them. And then we've got OnLeaks providing plenty of different renders in the usual 360 videos. Ice Universe advises we're again going to get three versions of the Galaxy S21. And this is going to be the Galaxy S21, the S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra. The S21 and S21 Plus are going to have flat displays while the Ultra will be curved. He also provides images of these displays and as you can see by all of them, it looks like the in-display selfie camera just isn't going to be happening. We then have the same 360 renders from OnLeaks. If we start with the Galaxy S21, on the front we've got the same design to recent releases including the punch hole selfie camera top center. Then on the back, we do have a bit of a change. We've got a triple camera setup with an LED flash. We've got three large lenses tucked in the very top left. While it normally takes a while for these new designs to grow on me, I really like this one from the start. If we take a look at the S21 Ultra, on the front you can see it's pretty much the same design, but we've got curved edges. In my opinion, it does make it look more premium, and of course this is going to be a larger phone with a 6.9 inch display compared to the S21 6.2. On the rear, we've got a quad camera setup in a new camera module, and unlike the S21, this is huge. It's odd and it's definitely going to take some time to grow on me. It seems a little bit strange to have the wasted space in the bottom right of the module and not put an additional sensor there, but at the same time, if they change the module, it would be unsymmetrical without it. Now let me know in the comments what you think about both of these modules and which one is your favourite. Next up, we've got the first photo leak from Kami NGO, who's provided us with a high detailed photo of the S21 camera module. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same as the renders provided by OnLeaks. Of course, there's no way to verify any of these leaks, but when we receive leaks from multiple different sources and they all look the same, then it does seem likely. 
So that's it for this week's leaks, but for those interested, we're going to run through the full specs of the whole range of the S21. First up, we've got the Galaxy S21. This is the smallest in the range and of course the entry level model. It comes with a 6.2 inch dynamic AMOLED display with an expected resolution of 1440 by 3200. This gives us 563 pixels per inch and it of course comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner. It's going to be a 120Hz display with HDR10+, but we're unsure if it's going to allow for 120Hz with a Quad HD Plus resolution or if they're going to restrict this to 60Hz again. We get a punch hole selfie camera in the top centre, and the details have not been leaked yet, but I'm going to expect about a 10 or a 12 megapixel sensor, similar to the predecessor. The phone will be powered by the 5 nanometer Snapdragon 875 in the Snapdragon regions and we now believe the Exynos chipset is going to be called the Exynos 2100. Both versions will be 5G compatible. We're expecting similar RAM and storage configurations as the predecessor, so 8 gigs of RAM with 128 storage and expect micro SD support. It's of course going to ship with Android 11 and on the rear we've got this new triple camera setup in a vertical alignment. At this point we're not going to speculate on sensors until we do have more solid evidence but expect a wide and ultra wide and a telephoto. Battery capacity is 4000 milliamp hours and it's going to support wireless and reverse wireless charging. We've got no details on the actual fast charge numbers yet but it will at least be 25 watts. Next up, we've got the Galaxy S21 Plus, and this is the middle of the range. For a change, we've got very little information on this model, and we're not going to speculate everything today, so just expect a similar device to the S21, but it's going to have a 6.7 inch display, more RAM and storage, and a larger battery capacity, and as soon as we get some information on this model, I'll update you guys straight away. Finally, we've got the Galaxy S21 Ultra, and this is of course the largest of the range and the most premium model. The Galaxy S21 Ultra comes with a 6.9 inch dynamic AMOLED display. It's expected to come with a resolution of 1440 by 3200, giving us 511 pixels per inch, and it will have the in-display fingerprint scanner. It's going to be a 120Hz display, and unlike the smaller two models, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is going to have a curved display. At this moment in time, we still don't know if it will support 120Hz and Quad HD Plus resolution, or if they will enforce the same restrictions. We get a punch hole selfie camera in the top centre, and details haven't been leaked just yet, but I would expect a larger sensor, as its predecessor had a 40 megapixel. The phone will be powered by the Snapdragon 875 in the Snapdragon regions and the Exynos 2100 globally. Both versions again are going to be 5G compatible. We're expecting similar RAM and storage configurations to its predecessor, so this is going to be 12 gigs of RAM or more with 128 storage and micro SD support and again it will ship with Android 11. On the rear we've got a new quad camera setup in this lowercase t alignment and again we're not going to speculate on sensors until we've got more solid proof but expect a wide and ultra wide and a telephoto and it's looking very likely that the primary camera is going to be the 108 megapixel HM2. Battery capacity is 5000 mAh and it supports wireless and reverse wireless charging and it will be at least 25 watts. All in all, the Galaxy S21 is looking like a great smartphone, but we have to be realistic and there's no huge changes or innovations from the predecessor. It's going to be slightly upgraded hardware with a more refined look, but overall a similar device. When it comes to pricing, nothing has been leaked yet, so we can only make assumptions based on their previous releases, which were of course very high. If we add about $50 to each price, we can expect the Galaxy S21 to be $1,000 to $1,050, the S21 Plus to be around $1,200 to $1,250, and the S21 Ultra to be around $1,400 or $1,450. Now don't be worried as these are just my estimates, but as soon as we get some leaks, I'll be sharing them straight away. Now of course that's all the information I've got for you guys today but I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is waiting for the Galaxy S21? What model are you waiting for and what are your thoughts on these new leaks? But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.